Now that the web page has been completed and we've got a, a number of new HTML5 elements in there, what we want to start to do is focus on the design and the layout of that uh, web page. And to do that, we're going to be incorporating several CSS3 rules. And there's some really neat things that uh, we can do with this. Um, but uh, we want to separate what's HTML5 and what's CSS. Um, we, in the previous uh, six tutorials, we worked on HTML5 tags and some of the new things that you have in there. And it looks basically just like a regular web page, but there are some uh, new tags that we did incorporate. Now we want to look at the design and the stuff that we're going to be incorporating. Uh, we're in a bit of a flux at this point where there's uh, some browsers support some of the features we're going to put in, some browsers don't. And uh, we're going to uh, put in some safeguards within our style sheets to make sure that uh, most of the browsers, the majority of the time, uh, the information is going to render out properly. So let's start off first of all by creating <coughs> a blank CSS page. <coughs> and so we're going to go up to the uh, file menu option and come down to new. And under the blank pages, under the uh, categories, uh, the type of page, we're going to click on CSS and I'll click on create. And this creates a blank CSS page. I'm going to uh, save this file now. So I'm going to file save and it wants to save it in this uh, folder, I'm going to make a brand new folder called CSS. And I'll double click on that folder and we'll give it the name first and I'll press the enter key. So this has been saved and now I'm going to close it off. Now if we go over here to our uh, property inspector, you're going to notice uh, that, or in the, sorry, in the files panel, you're going to notice that in the files panel, you can see that we have the, uh, the CSS in here. I'll just zoom out. Now, what we want to do, I'll just get rid of my magnifying glass here. What we want to do is we want to attach this web page to that CSS file. And that's actually done, um, there's a couple ways to do it. We could write the code in ourselves or come over here to the CSS panel. So you see this is our CSS panel or CSS styles, and inside the CSS styles panel, I click on the attach a style sheet. A dialog box will appear, and I'll browse. Um, I'm already inside of the CSS folder. I can go up one folder, and this is the main folder where our files are, but we want to be in the CSS folder. There's the first CSS page that we created. I'm going to click OK. You want to leave it on link. That way, as you make changes to the CSS, it's going to uh, reflect on the web page. So uh, because it's linked in, uh, the browser is going to read that information in as, it, um, as it's being built. So when we make a change or add a new rule to the CSS, it's automatically going to update the page. I'm going to click on the OK button. And you'll notice that there shouldn't be much of a change. Oh, I think I already had, yeah. There isn't much of a change inside of our uh, CSS page. It's uh, basically uh, just looking the exact same way. But up here in the top left corner, you'll notice that we have, now we can access that uh, CSS just by clicking on the tab. Up at the very top, here's the line of code that was added. So this code links the web page to the CSS. And one of the neat things that you can do is you can have more than one style sheet. So we can have one that's specific for printing. So if somebody's going to print um, your document, we can actually change the look of our web page so it's more printer friendly. And we would just attach a second style sheet uh, to that for the printing. Uh, we could also put the uh, print information inside the same style sheet, but most people tend to put in a second uh, CSS style for uh, print. All right, what we want to do now is start to add some rules. And we're going to do this and, and kind of take our time as we go through this. And to add a rule, again, we come over to the CSS panel. And I'm going to come down and click on right beside the button that where we attached it and to add a rule. And when we go to add a rule, I'll just zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. First of all, we need to type in the type of rule that we have. And primarily, um, we use IDs, uh, all of the uh, HTML5 stuff that we did with the div tags, those are IDs. Uh, we can use a class which can be applied to basically any HTML element. The ID usually means one element and then we have a tag. And the tag is basically a listing of all the HTML tags that we have uh, available. Well, the tag that I want to work on is the anchor tag and that's how we uh, develop links. You'll also notice that down here that the rule is going to be saved inside of the first CSS. I'll click OK. 
And then we get another dialog box. I said, all right, what do you want to do? And I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to choose the color and I'm going to set the color to uh, red. And I'll click the OK button. Now that I've done that, you notice that the links here are red. I notice I didn't get that eye, but we'll fix that later. But the links are all red. Let's go take a look at our CSS page to see what happened. And there's our anchor tag. And we have an opening brace and a closing brace. And there's the color red. Red, green, blue. Those are the three uh, numbers of four. We can also start to type in our own. So I can say text, uh, decoration. And what I'm going to do here is say none. And put in a semicolon and save that. If I go back to my uh, source code, and just let me zoom out here a little bit, you now notice that the links are no longer underlined because we said the, for the decoration that the text is set to none. I'm going to uh, come here and put in a colon hover, which is an attribute of the uh, link file, and what we, or the, uh, the anchor. And this is what happens when the mouse hovers over top of it. And I'm going to say text, again, uh, decoration, colon, underline. So what will happen is the mouse rolls over it is going to be underlined. So let's save that. Um, I can click over here on my index file. And I'm going to preview this in the browser. Again, the keyboard shortcut is F12. Um, you can also click on the... Uh, little uh, button here to find out which uh, browsers you want or have been associated with it. Uh, yes, I'm going to save the file. And when the browser pops up, it's going to show you the links. And as the mouse rolls over it, notice how the uh, links are now starting to become underlined. And that's because we set the text declaration for that particular property. I'm going to leave this uh, browser open and come back to this page. So that's the, uh, the beginning of uh, uh, the anchor. What we're going to do in the next step is start to uh, build uh, the container and some of the other elements based on the IDs of the div tags that we uh, populated earlier.